So we have our top and bottom built, and we'll make the main cabinet out of four sides. Once that's done, I can make the structure to hold the drawer slides, which will hold the drawers. And then I'll make the two drawers, one for recycling and one for the shredder. And the main structure of the cabinet is three quarter inch Baltic birch. I think it's the 18 millimeter thickness. So I can cut that down to the pieces I need. Now for three sides of the cabinet, I'm gonna basically use a, a, a full panel of plywood and cut holes in it with the CNC. But the back panel, I decided I could make a frame. And in doing that, I also realized the three shelves that are going in to the inside of the cabinet, I can make two of them as a frame as well. So this will save on plywood and it'll make it lighter for moving into the house. So this is one of the, the frames that'll go on the top or the bottom. So this is the panel that'll go against the wall and there's a light switch on that wall. So I need a little bit of access to that. So I cut a little rectangle out of that panel. And this is the front panel and this is the hole for the microwave. And then there's a little funny shape off of that rectangle, which is also the access to that, to that light switch. The big square below the microwave is the space for the drawers, where the recycling bin and the shredder will be. And on the panel that faces the door, I'll have a little cork board for pins and we can pin up notes and things. And once those are cut, I can miter each of the corners. So this was a slow, careful process because these long miters need to be as straight as possible so the, so the seam comes out nice and tight. And I wanted to put a dado in the top to take one of those frames that I made. So this will be the frame that holds up the tray that sits on the top. Then on the bottom, I want to put a rabbit in that'll take another one of those frames. And this will be the, the frame that sits on the base that holds, holds the cabinet up. And I can put biscuits in for that mitered joint. Now here's where it really made sense to glue half the frame up and then let that dry or set up. The side with all the clamps has glue and the side that's further from the camera is just dry fit and it's just kind of a, a spacer for the other side. I can take those clamps off. Now these frames I made just a little bit big so I can cut them down to size and get them to fit once everything's put together. And since I was doing a corner instead of something like a shelf, I eased the corner of the frames back just a little bit just so they, they fit all the way in on all four sides. And then I can hold that in place while I put the glue on the other two corners. And you have to work pretty fast and pretty accurately. <laughs> but it went together pretty well. This, this back corner I'm working on here is the one that you'll never see, so it sort of doesn't, doesn't matter as, quite as much. The clamps can come off. So I put the one frame that was in a dado at the top, but the one that's in a rabbit on the bottom, I can put in after everything's glued together. So I cut that to size and I have the cabinet flipped over and I can put that in and I can put the frame in. And I decided I could use pocket screws from the inside to hold this in place. So it sits on the edge of the rabbit. So it's plenty strong to hold up the entire weight of the cabinet. And the screws just kind of hold it in place. So you can kind of see how it's going together on the base now. Now I can start making the drawers. So I decided what I should do is make, make all of the blocking and spacers that need to be made to hold the drawer slides in, in place. So I did that first. So because the hole in the front is a little bit smaller than the cabinet, I need to hold the slides away from the side of the inside of the cabinet just a little bit so that the, the slides are flush with that hole. So on each side, I planed 
a piece of wood to hold a piece of plywood in exactly the right spot so that it would be flush with that, that hole. And I can just screw those into place. So I screwed a little spacer piece into place and then I screwed a piece of plywood into that. So that's how the two sides worked. Now, because there are two drawers, there has to also be a, a center piece. And that piece needs to be attached to the bottom and a little bit of the sides that, that come up from the bottom. So I used pocket screws to hold that in place. And I cut two scrap pieces of wood to the same length. And I could use those as spacers so that the this piece of wood to hold the slides will be parallel to the sides of the cabinet. And I can clamp this piece to some squares that'll keep it square to the bottom. And once everything's sort of held in place, I can then put the screws in. Then that center, center piece should be in exactly the right spot. To figure out the widths of the drawers I needed, I sort of reverse engineered them to figure out how to do the parts in the cabinet. And then now that I have the parts in the cabinet, I have the dimensions to make the drawers from. So it's sort of a reverse engineer and then a forward engineer to get to these cabinets. Because in the end, I need the shredder to fit into the smaller drawer. So I can start making the drawers now. And they'll be made out of half inch birch plywood. And I'll need a dado along the bottom to hold the bottom. And then a dado along the sides. And a rabbit along the front and back. And I'll put a link to the drawer video I did for the kitchen, which goes into this a little with, with a little bit more detail. But it's basically the same thing. So that the dado and the rabbit along the vertical sides of the drawers fit together. And it makes a, a nice, simple but strong joint for drawers. And it just glues together. And I put in some pin nails, but they're really there just to hold the piece in place while the glue dries. And for good measure, I clamp them together just for a little while. Didn't really need to do this, but, but it seemed like it would help. <laughs> then I can put the slides in. So I cut a scrap piece of wood to the height that I wanted the slides to be from the bottom. Then I can use that just to put the slide on well. I put the screws in for the slide. And I can put the slides, and I can put the half of the slide that goes in the drawer onto the drawer. And amazingly they fit on the first try, which usually doesn't seem to happen. Now for the fronts of the drawers, I cut some handles on the CNC machine, and then I cut the actual drawer faces out of that piece on the table saw. So I did the, the part that I needed to for the handles on the CNC, and then I cut the actual shapes of the drawer fronts on the, on the table saw. And the one thing I didn't get doing this was the, the little rounded corner to fit into the hole with the little rounded corners. And I could place those exactly where I wanted them with a little bit of a reveal all the way around. I could clamp that in place. Once that was held and clamped in place, I could put some screws in from the inside of the drawer to hold the face in place. And once I had two screws in on each side, I could then take the drawer out and put the rest of the screws in with the drawer out of the cabinet, which was a little bit easier. And I could sand the cabinet a little bit at this point. And then you can see how everything's going together. So it all sits on the base. And the top piece goes in. And the drawers can go in. In the next video, we'll install everything. So we're almost done. <laughs>